Welcome, Diego. Hello, hello. So sorry about yesterday. Oh, it's uh, okay. It's okay. We had, we had a lot of people. Um, it was a uh, very last minute, so I should be saying thank you for for making this and supporting the Bitcoin Hackathon. Um, and and, and it means a lot to us. Uh, you've done a lot of great things for the Bitcoin uh, ecosystem in general. And you know, I was just saying while you're logging on how how happy we are with the turnout for this Bitcoin Olympics <laughs> because it's our dream to bring together different tribes of Bitcoin and, and you definitely represent one, one of the um, more pioneering <laughs> bigger tribes. Right. So, so, so thank you for coming on stage. Um, could My you, pleasure. Yeah, thank My you pleasure so. to be here. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So uh, can you um, help the audience get to know you? So everyone knows that you are the CEO and co-founder Rootstock, CEO of IOV labs. Um, but, you know, maybe, maybe tell a little bit more about, about um, you know your background and how you how do you ended up uh, doing this awesome thing on Bitcoin, right? Uh, and then and then, and, then, I, I and then we'll jump into the the meat of it. One one uh, little clarification is that you know Rootstock is a decentralized platform, so it has no uh, CEO. Uh, but uh, I'm right. I'm the co-founder of the organization who who created the original source code for for Rootstock. And in a way, it keeps being one of the top contributors to, to the platform today, you know? So, because um, the, the organization IOE Labs used to, I mean, acquire RSK Labs, that was the original organization that created the, the first uh, source code for Rootstock. And um, like go, going to, I mean, to, to a little bit of my background, I, I've been in the, I started in the web days in the beginning. Well, I would say I started programming at 11. Uh, so, so I was like, since I was very young, I was in touch with technology. And, uh, you know, for me also, I was doing social work with uh, social activism with my mother since very early days and through my teenagehood. So I was always looking for ways to, to connect technology uh with purpose like uh use technology as a tool for social transformation and um and in the early days of the web 1994 was when i knew about the web uh, through wire magazine and a group of of friends in in argentina that they were like you know fascinated with the media lab um work with ne nicolas negro ponte the digital divide all the early days and you know where we saw the, the web as a way to evolve society and to create more democratic access to knowledge, to information. And, and I would say in the initial stages, we thought it could do, do more, but, but then we realized of the limitations of the, of the web. But I was part of that uh, process. And in 1995, uh, we created the website for the main newspaper in Argentina. It was the first webmaster uh, we launched in March 1996. So I leave the whole uh, web revolution or the dot-com revolution, the boom and bust as well, no? Because it's like we, in 1999, uh, if you ask us, we, we thought that the web was going to like grow linearly to, <laughs> to, to right. touch every corner of society. And then in the 2000, you have the big collapse, uh, but then you have the rebirth and that original promise was delivered no it's like we, we live in a different society today thanks to the web so, so I, actually let's let's pause there where do you think um you know if, if you if you had to compare that you know you just explained the like the web 1.0 back then and the crash and the rebirth what do, do you think we are right now with the with this new bitcoin phenomena it's been around for a while but it was stagnant but now it's like it's like a new day for bitcoin like what do you what do you see it you want to compare to that? Well, uh, you know, the, the web gave me a lot of lessons that I that I apply <laughs> to when when I when I got into Bitcoin in, in 2011. I got in touch, but actually, I started devoting myself in 2012 to to the Bitcoin uh, to creating Bitcoin communities and and devoting my full work. And one of the things I learned from the web is like it's, it's the technology is one part, but then the social adoption or the the i mean how well we as a society absorb technology it's 
it's also key, no? So it's like, it's not only having the technology, but also having the ability to, to uh, absorb technology. It's like social networks, you know, were available in the late nineties, but they, they took a long time until we had something like a proper environment for them to develop. What triggered the, the true adoption of, so, of social networks? Actually, the ubiquitous access to the internet, because back in 1999, people was accessing the internet from their desktops at work. So once we have portable devices, we started having ubiquitous access uh, to the internet in a massive scale, you know, because we have early uh, attempts like Docomo in, in Japan. But once you have that, is that the web could deliver the true potential. And with Bitcoin and, and what I call the internet of value, that is all these networks, uh, this network of networks of um, that to handle value, I think we are in a different environment because we already have that ubiquitous access, but what we are lacking in a way is uh, easy interfaces. Like today, the complexity of accessing the blockchain services, DeFi services is too high. So. So the last mile we need to walk in order to make uh, this accessible um, to, to people. So I think it's like we are a little bit before, you know, uh, easy access through, uh, you know, um, mobile devices was possible in the Bitcoin and blockchain space. It's like uh, we, we need to, yeah make it easy for the end, end user and remove a lot of the friction in, in interfacing. You know? It's like, yeah, that's where we are. So I would say pre-2007, pre maybe some somewhere there, like people well, is starting to acknowledge it. People is starting to, uh, to, I mean, everybody knows about Bitcoin, no? Even yeah. if they don't use it. Like, uh, yeah, I, I like I like that. That, that. that sort of intuitively makes sense. Pre two thousand seven, it's sort of like everyone knew about the internet back then, but a lot of the the best applications were still being built, right? Yeah, yeah. a lot of the best opportunities had had not really gotten to the and, size. And again, the technology yet. is there, no? Like like the technology to build social networks was there in nineteen ninety nine. You didn't need you didn't need to wait for two thousand seven, two thousand eight to have, you know, uh, Twitter, but. But basically, what we were lacking is is the context for for that technology to be absorbed, and, and I think we are in the same places now. We need to work on the context. The technologies are there. We need to connect the dots between all the elements because you have the DeFi protocols, but they are complex to understand for the average person. So somebody needs to package those DeFi protocols and 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 uh, um, give access to the to the regular people who lives day by day week by week and they they don't want to learn about the technology they want to use it so that's the thing they just like, want the value they just want the value it's sort of yes. like it on the surface it's got to look almost like the same thing but on the under the hood it's got like a a, a new technology yeah so thank, thanks for going on that detour that, and that was very insightful. So going mm -hmm. back to you about your background, you know, we're, we're, we're going through your background and, and on, on how you arrived at building Rootstock and then, and then doing IOV and then, and then, and then after that, let's, let's go beyond that. So, but right now we're Perfect. Back now. <laughs> very curious about the journey. So, so as I said, like after the web and, and the collapse and everything, I was like for 10 years, I was looking for something that was, um, you know, uh, that made me vi vibrate in the same way that the web did. And at the same time, a big part of what I expected from the web to deliver didn't happen. No? And, you know, when I got in touch with Bitcoin in 2011, I didn't get it in the full sense of it. It's like, I understood it was digital money. I, you know, there were very little users back in the day, fringe use cases. Uh, but then in 2012, I, I live in Argentina. Uh, and and back the, back then today is, is <laughs> we have again the same situation. We had capital control, so it was almost impossible to get money in and out of the country. Uh, and I have a soft, I had a software factory, uh, and my cast it was very difficult to collect the money from my customers abroad in in Europe, in the US, and um, and then a good friend from the early days, Wences Casares, from my my web days. 
uh, came back to me in early 2012 and told me, Diego, you have to look at this. This is amazing. Uh, it's Bitcoin. And I say, yeah, when says I, I check it out last year. It's, it's okay. But but I don't think, no, 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 no. He's like, he doesn't take no for an answer. So he told me, no, 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 no. Go to, <laughs> go, go to Blockchain Info and open an account here. I did that, like an, I opened a web wallet. Then he sent me 5,000 Bitcoins. Back in the day, it was like around $50,000, which was a lot of money. Uh, I mean, to be transferred. He was in the Silicon Valley. I was in, in Buenos Aires. And, and then he told me, well, now give, give them back to me. No? And I made the mistake of giving them back to give him back to me. <laughs> <laughs> but but, <laughs> so, but he, he told me, keep one, no? keep one Bitcoin for you so you can <laughs> play around with it. No? And, uh, and all that process took an hour. So when I saw that, it's like I said, okay, this is like, you know, I had all the values and the ethos of the web, no, of the internet, the, the openness and neutrality, the, you know, and, and when I saw that, I said, okay, this is how a financial system, an open and a neutral financial system should look like. And wow. then like, that's when I connected, okay, this was what we were missing to do like the full transformation that the web was promising. This was a piece that we were missing for this. And then after that call with Wences, I was like for two weeks, non-sleeping or almost non-sleeping. And, uh, you know, reading mostly about the monetary aspects because I don't come from a financial background. I come from a technological background, no? So so I, I, I was learning about the history of money, learning about like how Bretton Woods, how the, the current financial system works, uh, subscribe to Investopedia and every day they were sending me one one concept, financial concept, and I was reading through. And if I didn't understand the concepts, I was reading deep into that, like linking hypertext <laughs> uh, knowledge uh, acquisition style. And, and then, you know, then after two weeks, it's like I, I said, okay, yeah, this is going to be the next revolution, much like the web was. And, and then I decided to hold myself in full to it. So I, I, I knew from the web days that it was going to be, these things are complex. Disruptive innovation, you cannot address it like from an intellectual perspective. You need to, to test it. You need to, so that's why I started wow. doing everything. I bought a mining computer. It was a GPU base back, back then. Uh, started buying and selling Bitcoins in cafes with people in Buenos Aires to know who was the community. Uh, wow yeah so, so you built it from ground up so th thanks for sharing that that's, that's amazing let's, let's pause there for a second because i'm curious uh th in 2010 someone someone um sent you 5,000 or 50,000 bitcoin 12 2012 mm -hmm. 2012 can mm -hmm. i ask you who that was who, who was that person in silicon valley yeah it's wences casares he he's the the founder of sapo uh awesome. Awesome. okay so wow. he's also i would say he's ground zero for for the adoption in the silicon valley of bitcoin because he uh -huh. he did a, a lot of work evangelizing uh the people in the in the valley about the potential of bitcoin and he he brought into bitcoin a lot of very very important people like the, a lot of big entrepreneurs and and you know, VCs and everything. So, so I think he did a lot of work, much like we did with my partners in in the Bitcoin Latin America NGO in Latin America, spreading the word. Wences did that in in the Silicon Valley, and of course, from that it spread to to a big uh, big base. But but uh, yeah, he he did a lot of work for for Bitcoin adoption, M more from the monetary perspective, no, or financial perspective. I was doing it more from the grassroots part perspective. Wow. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah. No, well, thanks for sharing that. So, so going back to this, so we're so it's been over ten years basically that 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 um you've been building yes. the community or building technology, helping helping push the Bitcoin frontier, right? So, so we we left off on your your um in cafes. Uh, exchanging Bitcoin with people, mm -hmm. figuring out what the Bitcoin community was, right? So how did that mm -hmm. evolve into Rootstock and then what you're doing today? Well, I, 
so I would say 2012 and, and 2013 for me was like the mostly a learning processes. I, I wanted to understand the technology and I wanted to know where to apply myself. So I, so by the end of 2013, I, I had a more clear idea of the potential and a little bit of the limitations of the of the technology. Uh, and uh, but during 2013, we created uh, with Rodolfo Andrañez and Franco Amati, we started creating the Bitcoin communities in Latin America, first in Argentina. I was traveling to Santiago de Chile and, and creating a meetup, identifying the same in Montevideo, identifying leaders in the region and creating, like helping create a, a Bitcoin community. And at the end of 2013, we, we uh, made the La Bitcoin, the Latin American, the first La, Latin American Bitcoin conference that today is still going on every, every year and going through to different countries of Latin America. Uh, last year it had 10,000 attendees, so it's like growing and, and oh, it's a non for profit good. project. I mean, we did it, we don't take money from it. It's like all the money we, we get from that is reinvested in, in projects, in community projects. Uh, we support some Bitcoin core developers. We, we have a band called La Bitcoineta roaming through Latin America. Now, uh, there's one being made for Africa. So all the, the money we made from that went to 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 create more awareness also we we set up a bitcoin center in 2014 but at the end of 2013 I, I decided that i wanted to to put together my two passions that is like you know i want to create a society with equal opportunities for everybody regardless of their economic conditions so you know people talk about financial inclusion i don't like that term i think it's more about financial empowerment because it's like it's like yeah. giving the people the tools, you know, to to thrive. Who in whichever context, because maybe for a startup or for a, is is accessing uh, capital to to build for somebody that is living day to day, uh, you know, it's maybe getting a reputation that will allow them to sell their products and services to better markets or to to get access to uh, basic uh, financial tools like loans. No, so. I decided I wanted to chase that. And, and with that, on the following year, we co-created a, a group of voluntaries and started doing some experiences, bringing people from the slums into the, into the meetups, into the Bitcoin meetups to, for, uh, to sell their, their food, for example. They were selling dumplings. It's called empanadas in Argentina. So with that experience, we re we started to learn the difficulties of using Bitcoin in those contexts. And from that is that I started to realize that we need to extend Bitcoin uh, to, to be a full financial system, because in a way, Bitcoin itself is digital gold, is the first global settlement network, but it's more tailored, I would say, for two extreme uh, extremes of the society. It's, is being targeted to the people who can store value for more than two, three years. That that's maybe the top twenty percent of the population, and to the people who live in societies that are so unstable that the Bitcoin volatility it's it's even it doesn't matter. No, so so you can you protect yourself from the corruption of your countries, from the instability of your countries with Bitcoin. But everybody in between cannot i mean they live as i said no they live day by day they live week by week month by month maybe quarter to quarter so we need to create like a bridge between bitcoin as the the monetary uh, like the, the yeah the the path the the reserve of value of the world and the needs of people who needs maybe more stability but has a shorter horizon no financial horizon uh, like the people I wanted to serve, no, it's people in the slums, excluded, uh, and and that's when I started that journey. Uh, Ethereum was announced in January 2014 in the North American Bitcoin Conference. I was there to talk about what we were doing in Latin America. Um, I was before Ethereum. I was studying closely Bitchers, which for me is actually the the true pioneer in in DeFi. 
uh, although it was close because you could not build your primitives, the primitives they were creating, the financial primitives were very, very advanced. Uh, so, so I was trying too much. So the first thing I wanted to achieve was to have a peer-to-peer -peer monetary system back on by Bitcoin. So go back to the four knocks model, <laughs> but with digital gold that was going to be Bitcoin and the full transparency. So I started discussing and analyzing different models uh, for what today is called stable assets. Basically, there's four uh, models. One is like uh, fiat-based, so issuance by a central, the central bank. The other one is collateralized with the asset you are re representing, the case of USDC, USDT. The other one is algorithmic, uh, which in my opinion don't, don't work because uh, blockchains are not good for real time. And, and you know, if you have dependency on the markets, uh, then everything can be gamed. You know? It's like very difficult. And then the fourth model was like the one I wanted to do that was with uh, over collateralization. So it's like basically you use Bitcoin, you over collateralize to mitigate the volatility problems, but you have like a, you have a system that is re reliable for the one who wants to have a stable asset, uh, but also, um, yeah, can can provide some extra value for those who wants to have more Bitcoin, no? So the the, the long-term holder. So that was the idea, like connect the needs of the long-term holders that is preserve or increase purchasing power with the needs of people who need stability in the short term. Uh, so they they don't want the volatility of Bitcoin uh, and have a peer-to-peer -peer monetary system. And that system exists today. It's called Money on Chain and exists on Rustock. So I'm very proud that it was built by a by, by a group of brilliant entrepreneurs uh, from Argentina. Money on Chain. Yes, Money on Chain. And, um, and has what been year, running like, for years, more or less. So, sorry, four uh, years now. So congratulations on that. It seems like that you you finished like the first part of your vision. I mean, I, I see well, that you have I would say we are, vision, but you know, that's like the, <laughs> the first part, right? Yes. Yeah, it's that like, was the original idea. I went to Sergio Lerner, the chief, the co-founder of Rootstock and the chief scientist. He's the the technical mastermind uh, <laughs> be, be, yeah. behind uh, Rootstock. And that was the first idea. But then Sergio told me, Ito, why not go for the full thing? It's like we can create a Turing complete or general purpose environment. It doesn't need to be chess for a peer-to-peer -peer monetary system. Um, and that's when we started discussing, uh, yeah, joining forces to, to do this, extend Bitcoin uh, in order to create a full financial system. No? Yeah, and then we're going to have the pleasure of um, hearing from your colleague, uh, Sergio Lerner, next week. I believe. Oh, amazing. Amazing. Yeah. He's, he's brilliant. You know, he's one of the top scientific minds in the, in the Bitcoin and blockchain space. Uh, but he's very humble. He's like very low profile and, but it's, uh, it's amazing. It's like, for me, it's an honor to be, to have been working with him for seven years, uh, together. Wow. He's, yeah. That, he's well, that's, that's dedication. If you guys do something for seven years, that is dedication. <laughs> Yeah, no, it, it's, um, I think it's very inspirational too, because there's, there's going to be a lot of builders who maybe find out they're going to become founders, right? So you, you sharing your story is, is uh, very inspirational. And I, I think it, it, it sort of underscores a lot of the best entrepreneurs, they have a deeper purpose, right? Of course, making money is important uh, and it helps, it's a tool to help us uh, reach our goals, but really it's, it's, it's about having that, that, that deeper purpose. Um, to just go beyond and, and maybe do something useful or, 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 or significant for society, right? So Absolutely. with that said, what, <laughs> what? Because I think, no, because I think you touch a point that is very important that, you know, I, I would say that the more important trait of an entrepreneur is perseverance because the, the original idea you start with is never going to be the one that make it. It's like, you need to go, <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> you need to iterate, you need to, to find your way around it. Like uh, there will be moments where you will hit a wall. And, uh, and if you, I think, you know, perseverance 
needs purpose, I think, to, to exist. It's very difficult to persevere if you don't have a purpose for what you do. So purpose brings perseverance, perseverance brings success because, you know, if you keep trying, eventually the context, of course, you need to be careful not to run out of, of resources, no? But, but as long as you are on the race and you keep iterating, you will get better at it, you will find a way and and eventually you know uh connected to what you were saying uh the tide will come in your favor no and so 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 it's about that it's the preparation the lack <laughs> it's uh i always say overnight success is years and years of work <laughs> yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah no, i think that could turn into a quote purpose uh gives you uh, perseverance and perseverance gives you success yeah, no, I mean, it's, um, I encourage everyone to try to be an entrepreneur. It's, it's, it's definitely a, a very fulfilling uh, journey and experience because just like you said, you know, we, we, we have a purpose of doing something, but our idea on how to make that at this point in time is very different from, from after we try, 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 and then our perception changes, right? And now maybe yes. our underlying purpose is the same, but our idea of how to go about it and to to turn into reality sometimes you go after an intuition you know? when when i started with bitcoin i i was my foresight was that you know bitcoin was going to become what we have today running no in in rustock and the other lining all the second layer protocols like you know my my foresight was like okay we we will i mean bitcoin will become uh, a new finan financial infrastructure or a new financial system that would be global, neutral, open by by design. Um, but I truly didn't have an idea how it was going to be. Even when I started, like, you know, I it's, as I was attempting to do things with Bitcoin, I realized the limitations of Bitcoin and say, okay, we need to, to expand it. Uh, you know, I was saying, okay, I was finding the way. I, my the first time I had like a more clear roadmap on, on the implementation side, not on the conceptual, was at the end of 2015, 2016, where all the pieces started to fall. And that's when I, I started sharing this idea of the Internet of Value with a layered approach where different layers uh, would fulfill different functionalities of the financial system. No? So you would have layer one for me is reserve of value. So it's in a way asset uh issuance and and the management of like the, the core value layer two is economic coordination that's what rootstock is other ecosystems have conflated the two things in one like ethereum no so they have the store of value and the and the um economic coordination in in in, in the same layer uh, and then the the third layer is a scaling layer scaling and interoperability layer which I think it's like where we are now. Now we have a lot of solutions for that. My layer three is what today people call layer two, but but in a way, and then on top of that, I was seeing that we will have frameworks like kind of platform as a service, much like what Salesforce did uh, on top of that, and then people building on top of that, no, or cloud or what the cloud is doing for, for infra web infrastructure. So... <laughs> Diego, let me let me ask you a question to see, and um, you know, because some people are probably just joining the conversation right now, and just to make sure I understand what you mean. So, um, you, you you've built the Internet of Value rootstock as part of that. IOV is is building more pieces to it, and the the underlying purpose, your purpose for doing this, is a financial empowerment. Is that correct? Yes. Or just, okay. Excellent. Excellent. So, uh, between now and a full financial empowerment, meaning that like globally people are empowered financially, right? Between now and then, you know, there's there's a lot of work to do. And it, we have yes. to do it as a community, right? And this is why I'm so excited about the Bitcoin Olympics hackathon, right? And, yeah. and thank you for supporting and, and coming, representing <laughs> your tribe. Because only through collaboration and the cross-pollination of ideas will we be able to get there, right? So can Absolutely. you share with us because there's there's a, about 250 people signed up on Death Post or teams or solo founders, both and builders. And there's about 100 signed up on other channels that we have. And there's more signing. Now, maybe like even maybe only a quarter will probably 
make it to the end of the of the hackathon, right? Mm-hmm. So, but but even but those are going to be the ones that persevere. Maybe they have a purpose, or maybe you inspired their purpose, mm-hmm. right? So, like, give us some give us some um, ideas, right? Because a lot of them are, are thinking, what should I build for the hackathon? What should I build, right? What should I build? Um, what do you think should be built before the next big what happened? If you had more time, right? Because you have so many, you're doing so many things. If you had more time, what would be the top projects that you build? today before the next Bitcoin having to help further this purpose of financial empowerment? I, I think as, as I mentioned, I mean, for me, financial empowerment means different things for different people, of course, no, because it's like uh, one thing, if you are living day to day, you are on the on one extreme, no, it's like you, uh, for you, it's, it's more about safety. Uh, so good ways of store your wealth without, you know, being exposed to, to loss um you know maybe access to credit eventually um and i think the reputational uh identity is, is the key for that i'm that's one of the missing pieces in my original vision like how we use reputation to create a collateral for people to access uh to to financial services if they don't have anything else collateral no if they don't have a house a car a formal paycheck to put as collateral so but I would say now in the stage that will come later because I think that's like the end, the more challenging part. Now I think with the tools we have, we have DeFi protocols. Uh, we say we have this peer-to-peer monetary system, so we have the best stable asset uh, pegged to the dollar in existence that is dollar on chain. Then we have the the Reef dollar, also same protocol, different underlying asset because it's backed by Reef instead of Bitcoin. Of course, Bitcoin is. It's a higher quality asset, but it's okay. The model, different models, different assets. Uh, and then you have lending, for example, you have Tropicus that is doing lending. You have Sovereign that is also doing uh, kind of similar lending or exchange. But I, I would say if you focus on something, it's like to make all these tools useful for regular people. Like for me, this is about like finding maybe one uh, target audience. And I think we need to approach technology from the user perspective. It's like, uh, because if you design technology from a future features perspective, you end up with something that maybe nobody will want. And right. so my, my, yeah, my, my, I wouldn't say my advice, but yeah, my, my advice to them is like, find a, a user group that you know well, understand one need they have and try to build something around that need. So let's say it's remittance. Okay, let's take all the tools we have and create a remittance corridor between two countries that you know, maybe because you have family abroad. So build something for somebody that you know that that will use that and, and that you will improve their lives. So I would say I would go around those things. It's like, you know, it's like maybe for example, in Argentina, we have the, the local currency is very, it devaluates a lot. No, it, it loses like 50% value per year, more or less. So, so you know, for, for a store, a good thing would be saying, okay, I can pay, I, I can collect payments and those payments will be converted to, to dollars, for example, to scale the volatility of, of the local currency or the, sorry, the appreciation of the local currency. Uh, so that can be one idea, no? So, so look for ideas that you know, you know, uh, will answer a need from from a group that you know well. So, and try to combine. And I think in that process you will find also gaps, no? Because I think these hackathons for for us at IOB Labs are very important because then the developers will bring to us the things that are not good or the the missing pieces in, in the tool chain or in the protocol. So all that uh, feedback, uh, we can use it to build and fill the gaps, improve what we have, make the, the development experience better in the Rootstock ecosystem. So, so, but always do it with, with that uh, use case in, in mind, no? Like that, sorting that need. Yeah, no, no that, that is probably the first step, right? That's the most, like anchor it to like a real, real, real um, specific uh, customer segment and a specific point where they need help with right yeah so i think you know access to liquidity like loans uh you know 
cross-border payments or cross-regional payments, maybe state to state. I know we, you can think of, of things or, or industries that have problem uh, getting banked. Uh, you know, you can create payment systems for those industries. Uh, you know, even industries that are legal, no, like cannabis, for example, it's legal, but they are not accepted by a traditional banking system. Okay, you can build something for that industry that is, uh, you know, it's a legal industry, but it's like still has uh, um, not a good uh, reputation or whatever. And then the banking system don't want to touch it because of the liability they feel will have. Okay, you can so build the solution for them. But again, think of it, somebody that will that will have a that will have a need. I, 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 I like that what those both of those um examples the cannabis one and the banking is really interesting right and you you found a a a market demand that no existing solution can give them an easy solution to and yes. this is where perhaps a blockchain and bitcoin can can uh, create a elegant solution to the hard problem yes i i think th those are the fringe areas you know where where you are still within the boundaries of what is legal in the society and you are working but for some reason because maybe they are advancing something it's like uh in society uh, it's not a happy example but porn <laughs> porn in a way was the one who developed the credit card processing in the early days of the web no because it was fringe there was a need and they you know they build it but then that infrastructure serve anybody else no so so that's the thing it's like sometimes these fringe use cases help the technology like move forward and then it's used by the whole society you know it's yeah uh, uh, absolutely absolutely so let's fast forward a week and a half let's fast forward a week and a half um uh and people are turning their 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 final hackathon product right what what product specifically would you say like, wow, that's so interesting. I want to get to know those founders and help them take turn that project be and go beyond the hackathon. Like, what, okay. what are some? You know, busy, busy, the you're, thing, you're a busy guy, right? And there's so many ideas. Like, yeah. what are some that you would say? All right, I, I, Latin wanna... America, I mean, if you talk about the emerging markets like Latin America, Africa, India, Southeast Asia, I, what I think is like the virtuous circle we can build with the tools is like a system where people can store value in an asset that is, you know, uh, is not depreciating as fast uh, as the local currency. It can be a dollar base, it can be a Bitcoin base, depending on the, on the, on the needs that that person can then get a loan using that asset that they are using to store value for the longer term and get a loan in the asset they need to spend daily uh for their short-term uh, liquidity needs or or uh, uh, yeah uh, economic needs and and then ideally and that this can be done with partners because maybe the solution is not that you do everything by yourself but you plug in maybe stripe or you plug in uh, different partners to build the solution but then connect in a way with a debit card or a system where maybe it can be a virtual card so people can spend that money they get as a loan uh, everywhere everywhere else. If you build that, you have a financial system where people can like store value, get access to liquidity when for their short term needs, and pay everywhere. No, so you are connecting with the broader financial system. That per se, for example, is for me is uh, it's one use case that is very interesting, and maybe you can like because in a hackathon you're not going to build the full solution but maybe you can tackle one part of that you can say okay i will do only a very easy to use store of value and loan system that is integrated where i say okay you know i store this asset bitcoin and i can get very easily in a very simple interface get a you know 20 percent of the value i'm putting as collateral as a loan to to um, to uh, to support my everyday needs no for example that could be a piece of that or somebody can say okay now i will integrate with payment processors and do using apis and everything so this sort out how this asset this stable asset for example can be liquid liquidated to pay to a credit card no to a credit card system so like maybe of this full circuit i mentioned maybe you can tackle one 
one of those things. Um, then cross borders is another thing that is very, very important, I think cross-border payments because there's a lot of people working abroad and and sending money back home um so so i would say yeah protection from uh from inflation or depreciation then uh, cross-border payments and um and access to to loans i think it's the collateralized loans i, I think it's all those are good use cases to build but then uh, yeah, maybe they want to tackle something else, like a user experience thing. For example, in we have all these protocols like Reef Relay and and RNS that enable you to pay, for example, using the same asset you are you're using. So for example, you if you are using a dollar based asset, you can pay the fees of the network with a dollar denominated asset, and you can use an alias. So you can send money to an alias. Those are other ideas that are interesting. For example, pay to phone, like say, okay, how we can make a system that will pay somebody, I can send money to somebody that doesn't have a wallet or anything, but all, uh, only knowing their phone number, I can send them 10 uh, RIF dollars or, or uh, dollars on chain or whatever asset they choose, no? So think about that, no? It's like the payment processing, uh, store of value, loans, access to liquidity. Wow. Okay. So those are a bunch of awesome ideas. So being one <laughs> of the biggest, yeah, that, that's that's already gold. I think you give a lot of um of, of the hackers, the builders, uh, a big hint, right? And mm -hmm. being one of the um, biggest backers of the Bitcoin Olympics, one of the biggest prize uh, donors, right? I think um, mm -hmm. if you guys are listening right now to the audience and we're going to repost this right on YouTube and other social media, when you hear this, that's a big hint on who might win. <laughs> <Those prizes. laughs> that's a big hint, guys. That's a big hint. All right. So so um, rewatch this a couple of times if you guys need to. So, OK, uh, Diego, I want to be mindful of the time. We already went over 15 minutes, but, you know, I think it was completely worth it because you just like uh, gave some gold, especially it's to people who are aspiring founders, right? Um, but this is, this, is, this is gold because um, only people on the, on the frontier, right? It takes a long time to get to the frontier. And once you're on the frontier, in front of us is wilderness, right? And you know what works, what doesn't work. And mm -hmm. what doesn't work, if we can fix it, potentially is going to make a lot of impact for society. And if we know how to put a business model around it, perhaps it could become very lucrative for the people that are involved as well right so so um, so with that I think said, that's, what, that's what entrepreneurs do no they they make the society better they they find unsolved problems <laughs> and find a new way to 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 solve them no so so and and because of that they make the society better you know more prosper so yeah so on that, no I, I completely agree with you on that note um, can you share some inspiring or some encouraging words to all those people out there that are already part of the Bitcoin Olympics hackathon or people that are thinking about joining? Um, share some share some last words to um, get everyone excited. Like what, what's, um, what's, what's, well, what, I think we. What you, what, what you, how about this? What would you? What do you wish you knew ten years from before? You know, what I mean, when you first started on your entrepreneurial journey, or even before that, yeah. I think, yeah, I mean, what are the lessons? It's because a lot of the lessons I had from the web, no? So when I entered into Bitcoin, I knew it was going to be a marathon. I knew it was going to be not a sprint. So so I knew a lot of things uh, that we were going to have ups and downs. I think we are in a moment, very particular moment, because finally we are, you know, we have been developing technology, building like the foundations, and now we are, at the point where if we turn those protocols that technology into products that people that can improve people's life then we will enter and i think we are entering now into the growth phase of our ecosystem so what we are doing is entering into a new phase of, of adoption so i think one one thing i already mentioned like one thing sometimes we get in love with technology but technology needs to be a tool uh to solve real problems so that's one one lesson is like you know always find 
who is your customer, what's the problem you're solving for that customer and, and focus around that. It's like learn the technology because that's your toolkit. No, it's like that's the tools you have to sort solve the problem. So that's one thing. It's like make the 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 use case uh your your top priority, no? Don't don't try to minimize uh like building too much in abstract without touching base with your customer and testing it so that's one thing that is important the other thing is in a, in a startup people is the more important thing because as we said you know you will never know the um, what will be the path so like you know where you want to get but you don't know exactly how to get there so at the end it's people so check i mean it's not only from the hard skills, you no, know? it's like, of course, you need to have the people with the right talent to build things, like I understand who will contribute each one of the things, but also look on the human side, you no, know? on the soft skills. It's like uh, people that you can trust people, because of course, as part of being an entrepreneur, you will go through a lot of storms. Uh, and you know, that's when people is tested. When you have money, everything is doing well, everybody's nice. But the people who, <laughs> but, yeah. but but it's in the storms that you want to to see how people behave and uh, and you know that's so so check well who you build with. You no, know? it's like uh, check that the and finally I think what we discuss the the purpose like find find and the purpose that doesn't need to be something uh, grandiloquent. It doesn't need to be like something. Uh, huge it can be like your purpose maybe it's helping specific uh, community that you connect with or or something that relates to your values to what you how i mean to your personal experience i i think it's like difficult to commit and and connect with something that is unrelated to you so i think we need to build like what i'm doing is because you know i, I went to the slums with my mother when i was nine so I, I saw those realities very young in my in my early days so so that's connected to my life to my experience so I think it's important that that element is important so I would say you know teams good teams <laughs> you know uh, um, problem oriented uh, development like uh, problem solving oriented development um, yeah good teams and and try to connect it with with something that is meaningful for you as you say i were like beyond money because otherwise you know sometimes i always say if you want to make money maybe finding a, a good job in a corporation for your <laughs> skills like uh, the, the perfect match will give you more peace of mind and more money uh <laughs> That, than than uh, than doing a startup. You have to do a startup because you want something unique, um, or that you feel is unique to you, manifested in the world. No? You want to to create something new in the world, and then money will come. Money is like a consequence of that. No? It's like when you are uh, successful at what you are building, money will come. But uh, yeah, I love that. I love how you say money is a consequence of all the other things, right? Like the team, having the purpose, having a purpose that you're connected to, right? Doesn't have to be yeah. big, but something that 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 you, you have firsthand experience, you can feel it, touch it, feel it. Um, also, it's, it's great advice to let people know ahead of time that entrepreneurship is a marathon with, with ups and downs, right? And yeah, like when the money comes, everyone's your friend. <laughs> but when the storm comes, <laughs> and then, you, then you know who, who um, who your real friends are so that's 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 great advice um and I, and I think this is why this hackathon is so interesting because people are going to you know one of the one of the criteria is that they have to form teams um only teams can submit the final product right um next week we're going to have um sergio learner and some people from rootstock team uh get down and dirty with the technology so if you guys have some of the ideas if you like some ideas that diego uh, just share it or maybe you already resonate with it maybe you're already thinking sort of like the same thing come next week come next week and think and and, and learn how you could actually hack something out and and like like diego said you don't have to build the whole product build like the like the the core part of it or proof of concept first right try it out try it out i'm really excited to see what's going to happen and you know we, we we've had like a lot of different technologies 
coming into play, like Lightning, Stacks, uh, DLCs, um, um, Ordinals are coming in, right? And now we have Rootstock. And, you know, I'm excited to see what happens when people have all this information. I would love to. Yeah. yeah. Me too. I would love to see, you know, if people do mashups of the different technologies. Like, I think it's, uh, yeah, this uh, it, it's it's great. Hackathons are like kind of a Cambrian explosion of <laughs> of ideas and people like without preconceptions, like trying things. So, so for me, it's, a, it's also very exciting to see what people will build. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's <laughs> yeah, explosion for sure, for sure. And and we hope that this is not the only Bitcoin Olympics hackathon. We hope this is the first of many. And we want to yeah. keep bringing the tribes together to help each other innovate and build this, build this, um, build the vision together, build a sustainable Bitcoin economy together. Actually, you know, um, another person mentioned Cambrian Explosion um, earlier in the hackathon in the talk. Do you know who that is? Uh huh. No, who, who Munir, was that? from Stacks. Oh, he's, he's trust me, she's now. So yeah, I mean, you, it, I don't know if you guys know each other, but if you guys don't, I, I want to put you guys together. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we we cross. Uh, we don't. We didn't have the opportunity to talk deeper because always we talk. I think in panels or things like that. Not not only one to one, but uh, but yeah, he's also like has been in the space for for a long time, uh, trying. Well, exactly this. You no know, stacks before stacks uh, was block stacks. So so he has been iterating on his idea and trying to find a way. So is how it works. No, I, I I don't recall exactly, but I think it's like as early as 2014 or 2015. He he was like very yeah, early. It's, it's quite early also. Yeah, it's quite early also. Yeah, you guys are yeah. you guys are both brand years. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so so yes, it's like uh, we are all trying to create the financial system of the world of the of the future. No, it's like um, as I said, I, this internet of value. It's by definition a network of networks uh, for the the handling and 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 of value and and store of value, and I think th that per se is very exciting, no? But you need to resonate with that, like also being part of this pioneering wave of entrepreneurs. I one thing that is very interesting: the members of the Bitcoin meetups uh, that we created in 2013 are today the leaders of the top organizations in in the space in latin america so is wow. the, the founder of bitso is there the founder of repio like you look at all the maybe there are some younger entrepreneurs younger generations but the top companies in the in the space in latin america came from that com early community so i think in a way i would love to see these hackathons become like the you know the hotbed for for the new <laughs> the the new uh pioneer uh, you know entrepreneurs that will be successful and will be leading the industry maybe 10 years from now absolutely so. absolutely and, and looking forward to the results a week and a half from now hopefully i have some good news to share with you some people picked up your ideas and ran with them and in the future let's keep this going let's let's um let's not let, let's make this the first time of, of many times yes and let's let's, let's 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 do this together let's do this together thank you again <laughs> Honored to have you with the Bitcoin Olympics Hackathon, Diego, and you will welcome My back anytime. Looking, looking forward to it. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Big hug. Take care. Thank you. Bye bye.